What's going on, A pluses, nerd mixes? It is your boy, MB Uchiha. And man, oh man, was I disappointed. We'll get into it. Flash, season seven, episode three, Mother. But before we get into that, have to let you guys know A plus opinions has a Patreon. That's right. A plus opinions is a Patreon supporting A plus hero report. A plus more phenomenal. You can show in your support and join with three different tiers, $1, $5, $10. There's a whole bunch of bonuses and different things you can get going in there, including audio only exclusive uploads of the podcasts and reviews we do before they go up on YouTube. Also, a bunch of different reviews and character breakdowns that you can't get anywhere else. And it gives you access to the A plus discord. So make sure you guys check that out as we get into the review for season seven, episode three of the flash mother. Now this episode, you could tell was hindered, I believe by everything that happened with COVID and the shutdown with the pandemic and everything, because it just felt discombobulated, like everything was moving over the place and they were trying to wrap up a whole bunch of stuff in the little amount of time that they actually had. And it kind of took away from the story that they had built up. It was just a horrible end uh, to the evil arc of what was going on to the Mirrorverse or whatever it would be called. The, the way that the problem was handled was interesting uh, because it was something that they foreshadowed for a while and seeing the payoff come off of them being able to get an organic new speed force through the Flash being a paragon of love and his connection with Iris was actually pretty interesting and made it feel like everything that had happened the past couple of years was actually worth something. So I really dig that. Um the talk no jutsu that iris used in order to be able to talk down eva and get her to just retreat and fix everything and just retreat to the mirror verse it just seemed like a scapegoat it, it just seemed like they made a villain that was so powerful that they weren't going to be able to defeat her and they used talk no jutsu to get out of it so somebody's been watching a lot of episodes of Naruto, to be honest with you, because I, I just wasn't digging that and how that happened. Um, the Ralph Dibney write-off was hilarious to me, hilarious to me, because it, it felt like he caught so much heat for what he said online. You, you get what I'm saying? He caught so much heat that they actually wrote his character into being melted, yo. Like, had to put on a suit, walking around looking like Daft Punk. <laughs> uh, that was interesting to me in order to cover up the face of the actor that was formerly playing Ralph and to transition into what we feel like is actually going to be him coming back. And maybe now because his face was melted and maybe reconstructed, you know what I'm saying, inside the suit, when he comes back looking like something different. I don't think it's going to bother too many people at all because of the extreme they went to in order to set that up. Uh, Sue being clear to her crimes was kind of cool, but it just felt rushed with everything else that was going on in the episode with Eva trying to take over the world. And they, they just felt like they had too many loose ends that they were trying to tie up. The Harrison Wells being the original Harrison Wells and appearing and being able to time travel and the explanation they had this there's gotta be more than that. There's gotta be more than that. When y'all when y'all saw him when Iris just was in a coma for I don't know how long, like just out, and then all of a sudden they figured out how to rig the artificial speed force to take an organic conductor and her just walking out of nowhere. You know what I'm saying? No lead up to her waking up, uh, wanting to help Barry, no, no visions or anything like that. Or her, when that, her just getting up and just walking in like nothing's wrong uh, after what she just went to. And them talking about how 
her brain was separated and all that. It just it, it was just too quick for me. But the fact that it took her and the speed force that was inside her and the connection through their love, the sparks and stuff that they felt, you know, what I'm saying the spark of love gave them the speed force back. Uh, it it was interesting, and I like the way they did that. But did y'all see that look when Wells was like, "Is that really Harrison Wells? Is that Thorn? Is that somebody else?" Hmm, I, I'm curious because at the end of the episode, when you saw the Speed Force connect, you saw the lightning shoot up. And you saw the other colors of lightning shoot out, like the purple, the yellow, the red. I think it was white also that shot across. Makes me wonder where that lightning was going. Could we have other characters coming back? You know what I'm saying? Excess? No. Anybody? Kid Flash? Be, it'd be pretty interesting to see what happens uh, with that. That's definitely leading up to something bigger. But um, the way Barry got his powers back was cool. Uh, everything else that was going on in the episode, like I said, just seemed jumbled around. Even Camilla and Cisco reuniting and him telling I love her and her, I love you too. It just seemed like them th there's something might be going on like that like cisco might be losing another girl like maybe she was in the mirror for so long she realized this other stuff she wanted to do and she doesn't want to be bogged down by cisco scene coming back out um uh, makes me wonder what's going to be his spot in the show going forth you know what i'm saying so it it it, it made the everything that was on the line the importance of everything it just they just wrapped it up real quick because it was literally just a talk with eva and then they held hands and got to destroy her you know destroyed all her mirror people and then she just went away uh no consequences to her actions or anything like that and it, eva kind of reminded me of a thanos type character because she was looking at a world that didn't deserve the world and wanted to bring her people into that world because they would they would make it perfect they keep it safe and just take everybody that was in the world that they were destroying and just put them in the mirror verse they're just swapping worlds didn't seem that big of a deal to me so did that make the flash the villain of the season i i don't know man i don't know i just feel like uh, COVID, the the pandemic messed that episode up because I believe it's like we said it's supposed to be a culmination of the past season, uh, these last three episodes before we get into the new stuff, and them having to shoot that I'm guessing or whatever I I, I forgot what the schedule was for that them trying to do that actually just took away from the episode it, it it didn't hit for me at all but I am looking forward to seeing the stakes raised it looks like we're gonna have vill more powerful villains. Uh, we got Cadabra coming back next week. A souped up Cadabra, it looks like. They're going to have to be souped up because um, there hasn't been a villain that Flash hasn't been, Flash and Team Flash haven't been able to deal with. Um, I do like the shout out to a previous uh, Black Lightning episode um, that Adam touched on. Not this past Sunday. I think it's the one before that. Uh, when they had to collect the particles of uh jess is that her name um because she went up in the sky whatever and absorbed too much power and just turned into particles and the fact that uh jefferson knew somebody in a flash that can get them the uh the tech they needed because there was one in star city central city there's one in central city so that that was interesting to me because that's like one of the first times i actually seen them use a character from that for a long time if it wasn't a crossover or if it wasn't just Green Arrow and Flash, you know what I'm saying? That that was interesting to me that they used that in order to solve that problem. It's real cool to me because uh, I think there needs to be more than that when when it comes to the CW verse. Especially that being the last season of Black Lightning, I would love to see a team up between Team Flash and Team Black Lightning. That that would be pretty cool. But what did you guys think about this episode? I'm mm, Six out of ten. I mean, it was satisfying. Uh, Flash had some cool sequences, especially when fighting. Uh, so did Frost, and so did Cisco. Cisco with his 
gauntlets that he's wearing now to recreate the powers. This, you know, what I'm saying some of the powers he used to have. But the Flash is out there doing work, z- zipping past people, throwing lightning when he was on top of the building, and he did like little tornado spin with the lightning coming out of his hands to take out all the little mirror copies. Uh, that was pretty interesting. That's pretty cool. You've seen him spend a little money this season. It still is not the look of Superman and Lois money spent, but uh, it is better than what they did before. Let me know what y'all thought about this episode in the comment below. Um, Like I said, I give it like a six out of 10, but I am looking forward to seeing where they go from here. And it does look like from the previews of the next episode that the production value goes up a little bit. Um, Superman and Lois looking as clean and looking as good as it does, uh, does take some of the sheen shine off of some of these other cw shows so uh let's see what happens i was worried about that too i was worried about like and the fact that superman and lois follows the flash doesn't help it either at all let me know what y'all think about the comments below don't forget to like and subscribe follow us everywhere at a plus opinions follow me at nerd mix alpha everywhere and until next week love you guys see you soon keep it a plus Thank you.